Just this week, Lucid Motors had the ribbon cutting ceremony for phase two of its Casa Grande, Arizona manufacturing facility, and they increased their amount of space from roughly 900,000 square feet to almost 4 million square feet of manufacturing space. Now, that might seem strange because the automaker is relatively small at this point. They've only sold about 10,000 vehicles in the past two years. So I was on hand at the event and I was able to interview CEO Peter Rawlinson. Now, we talked about a lot of things, but one of the things that I really talked to him about was, why does Lucid need such an enormous manufacturing facility? Peter answered the question and alluded to the fact that that might not even be enough in the future. Stick around and find out exactly why that is in my 10-minute interview with Lucid CEO, Peter Rawlinson. This video, as well as all of the videos here on State of Charge, is sponsored by QMerit. Once I've helped you decide which electric vehicle charger you're going to buy, then follow the link in the description of my videos and have QMerit install it. Okay, I'm here with Peter Rawlinson. Lucid CEO, and we're inside of a new facility, an enormous facility. I was here on site at AMP1 in Casa Grande, Arizona, three years ago when they opened up the phase one of this facility. Yeah. But now you're here to uh, announce the opening of phase two, uh, which quadrupled the size of Lucid's manufacturing facility. Phase one was a little under a million square feet. That's right. Now you're almost four million square Indeed. feet. So Indeed. This Tom. place is enormous. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about the need for such a huge facility. Well, we're preparing it for our new product, the Gravity SUV, which is scheduled to run down this line later this year. So Gravity is a seven-seater um, state-of-the-art electric SUV over 440 miles range. It's going to address a much bigger market than our sedan, and we're preparing the factory ready for it. And we're in general assembly here, and Gravity and Air are going to run down the same production line, a real, uh, uh, you know, a flexible manufacturing system. But we're also vertically integrating. We've made a big investment in the most advanced stamping uh, plant, and that's just to the north of here, all under this same roof, effectively. And we're bringing in our powertrain into this part of the building. We're dedicating 500,000 square feet for powertrain. That's going to include Sapphire powertrain, and we're going to build all the units for Aston Martin in this building as well. Okay, yeah, I wanted to, I definitely wanted to touch on that because currently the powertrain is built at a remote facility. Yes, it's Hanna close Road. by, right? It's only a few miles away. It's only a few miles away, yeah. but, and that's where it's going to be in, in, under the same roof. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I just watched your presentation uh, with the governor, and uh, that, that went very well. Thank you. Um, one of the things I noticed was for the first time you flashed a silhouette of the next vehicle. Yes, yes. Um, and that's going to be sort of a Mid-size, mid uh, right, yeah. and coming yeah. somewhere around totally. the middle of this this decade. It's just or, a few years just away. Just a few years away. Yeah. We talked that we we touched on that yeah. when I talked to you uh, last month in New York City yeah. uh, with the Gravity, uh, mm -hmm. and um, you know you talked about how excited you were for that. But we got to get the Gravity out first. Totally. When that vehicle does come out, will this facility have enough capacity to make? air, gravity, and that car? Yes, theoretically it will, because we will have an install capacity here now when all this is truly up and running of 90,000 units per annum. I don't anticipate air and gravity volume being to that, so I think we can run potentially three vehicles down this same line with mid-size when it comes. Okay, so I, I have to ask you this question because I know some people are going to ask me, why the need to build out such an enormous facility when the first vehicle that was launched, the Air, might not be selling at this point as mu as well as we're projected or, or even that I thought it would because I mm. think it's a fantastic Thank vehicle. You. Thank you, Tom. Um, you know people are going to say, why do you need to have such a big facility? Uh, and that uh, I have to ask you that question. Well, it's important to plan for the future. You have to size your paint shop to certain quantum volumes. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it makes no sense in just incrementally increasing yeah. the scale. So we always put that future volume proof into our paint shop. Mm -hmm. um, and so there when we bring in gravity as well, we've just got to plan and invest for the future. And it made sense as part of our long-term growth plan to go for this scale 
at this juncture in our growth. And one of the things we talked about in New York City that, um, you know, it obviously has been in the news lately and it, it seemed like it was a point of contention for you that it bothered you was you had a lot of press about Lucid losing money per vehicle. And yeah, what you said to yeah. me was, Tom, you know, we're in the growth stage now. Yeah, and yeah. I guess this is what you're talking exactly. about. This is where exactly. you're investing exactly. your money. There's a huge investment here. There's a huge investment you don't see here in our stamping facility, bringing the powertrain in, expanding that. Then we've got investment. We've just put the first car plant into Saudi Arabia, modest scale. But we're now breaking ground on a bigger car plant that we're going to put mid-size into Saudi Arabia. This is going to be huge, huge for the area, huge for us. And then we've got all our R&D for our future models, for our technology roadmap. So we'll be able to make more and more efficient cars. We're at 4.74 miles per kilowatt hour with pure rear wheel drive now. I want to get further and further down that efficiency road. So we'll be able to make cars with go, which go further with less batteries and address the fundamental uh, roadblock for wider adoption of EVs, which is the cost of batteries. Then we've got all the tooling investment in gravity, which are really in the thick of it now. This is where we've got all the body tooling, all the stamping tooling, all the high pressure uh, injection dies for the, the casting sets that are going into gravity. All the arms, the suspension arms, um, you know, all the, in, the, the injection moulding, so the plastics inside the car, the outside, the, the plastics on the outside, the headlamps, the seats, we're in the thick of that investment phase. And then on top of that all, we've got our R&D investment. So, so much of our financials are going into future growth of the business. This is a long-term strategy which is playing out. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And, you know, and I pointed this out the last time we talked, uh, other startups, let's say, uh, Tesla, for instance, took many years before they were profitable. You know, it wasn't like uh, three years in totally, on their first totally. vehicle. They had their the Model 3 moment where they started totally. selling, you know, totally. millions of cars and, you know, perhaps totally. the strategy of Lucid is going to be when that mid-sized car comes out that is lower price, a little bit more of a mass market appeal, uh, that might be the, that totally. might be Lucid's, totally. Lucid's and, value And Tesla moment. was built on a long-term vision and a confidence for the future and that's exactly what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Our long-term vision is to move progressively down market, nothing's ever changed. We compete with Mercedes-Benz, with Lucid Air, and gravity. We have to define the brand and the industrialization costs for a higher volume are just prohibitive for a startup. We just baby steps, we relentlessly move towards more affordable models. We're seeing now with the pure rear wheel drive, it starts from $74,900. That's a snip and it's a great driver's car. But the midsize will be notionally around $50,000. Okay. And it's still not truly affordable for yeah. most people. I right. accept that, but that's as far as we're going to be able to get within a few years. Yeah. Well, fifty thousand makes a, a big difference, mm. you know, and totally. uh, uh, especially with people that play in that price range. Yes. Even five thousand extra uh, eliminates a lot of people. So uh, I think if if you're able to do something like that with a, it looks like it was almost like a crossover type. We saw the silhouette. We haven't seen any more than the silhouette, but uh, if you could bring something to market in in that range and and deliver lucid efficiency, yeah. uh, I personally think it would do well. That's what we, I think the EV of the future, and I've said this a lot, is not necessarily going to be about crazy amount of range. We don't need to carry the antidote for range anxiety on the vehicle in terms of range per se. We need to address the big obstacle, which is the cost of the battery. And the way to address that is high technology efficiency. Okay, last question, four million square feet. Will this facility get bigger at some point? Oh, I'd love it to. You have the room here. Oh, we've got uh, plenty of acres. But okay. let's, let's talk about gravity, baby okay. steps. Today is a red letter day for everybody. This is a huge team effort for the whole, hats off to my entire team for making this happen, for realizing this dream. Two years ago, I stood here, I said, we're gonna quadruple the size of this place. Everyone thought I was blowing smoke. We've done that, huge team effort. But on the, the same time, it is just another baby step for the company each day. I mean, I'm currently re doing technical reviews for readiness for gravity. I'm also reviewing mid-size cost. How are we gonna address the fundamentals of the cost and affordability of that product? Looking at that right now. It's, 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 it's fascinating and it's crazy every day. 
Listen, Peter, that, this has been great. Thank you for coming Thank on. I you, appreciate Tom. it. It's always great talking to you. Hopefully this won't be our last conversation. No, indeed. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for your great work. Thanks.